And I also find that a lot of times in relationships, especially with black men, and they find out that um, they're having trouble with these women, they decide to go elsewhere and go to other places. Um, I'll have several friends who just went up and moved to Brazil. My name is Stephen Gregory Holmes from Chicago. My name is Harold Motley from New Jersey. I've been in Rio three good times. I've been in Rio 19, 18, 19 times. I, I anticipated a, a poor and kind of desolate, um, beat up area with, with, with uh, you know, people living on the sidewalks and that kind of stuff, man. But she's not like that at all. On, on what he's saying, a lot of people have a misconception that this is some kind of third world country. There are people, there are ladies walking down the street swinging shopping bags like any other big city in America, <laughs> spending right. money. Any, they have things down here that would not survive in the States. Like on every two or three blocks, you got a grocery store. And these people tend to shop exclusively in their area like that. That wouldn't, that, would, that concept would never last in, a, in America though. We go to one big supermarket if it's, if it's six, seven, eight blocks away. Here, everybody's down here walking, or so, and so people tend to shop in the neighborhood. There's concepts down here that would not survive in America. But women are women are noticing that their men are crossing the borders to find happiness, romance, or even just somebody to have a good time, hang out with. They not taking. I know a cat that used to take women on vacations. He don't do that no more. He come to Brazil. Why? Because his vacation is here. No, they say, I'd love to go with you, Harold, but nah, man, my wife is not gonna let me go down there. And that tells me, if a man's wife is not gonna let him come, then you got problems. I know guys <laughs> who would love to come down here, but they said, man, and I tell them, I say, you don't wanna come down to Rio. I said, because if you do, you're gonna come back thinking, how can I get rid of her? This will change your thinking of women down here. I said, mm. don't come to Brazil. I said, take your wife on an Alaskan cruise, buddy. Don't come to Rio by yourself. I said, because you're going to come back seriously <laughs> depressed when you get to States. The world is more like yourself than people in the U.S. tend to believe. If, if you don't travel, you don't understand what's happening outside of the borders of the U.S. And that's why I call back at home the Matrix. They want you to believe that the end all to be all is what's happening in the U.S. It's not. The world is more like one another than the U.S. will lead you to believe. A lot of people want you to believe that the U.S. is the world, and it's not. Yes, I, I definitely believe that traveling and seeing other parts of the world is definitely a key thing because we need to open our horizons. A lot of times by being in our communities, all we see is, is what's in our community and we believe that that is the entire world. In actuality, it's really not. The world is, is a vast, great place and we need to get out and see more. You know, we need to vacation outside of, of uh, United States borders. You need to see how other cultures live, how other cultures do things. Um, you need to see how women are from other places and how they interact with their men and how they interact in society. You know, because we need to also see that what we're doing here in America is not the whole world, nor does that make it right just because we're here in America. A lot of times, you know, the women, women keep themselves up here. They take care of themselves, you know. And they take care of the brothers, too. A lot of brothers come here because they, they can actually, instead of taking some, you know, someone with baggage on a trip, you know, with them, they can come to a place where they, they can pay a quarter of the cost, have access to the nice beaches, beautiful women, good food, you know, and, and brothers could come and chop it up and relax. Well, I have several friends who have um, up and moved to Brazil and have found that the, the relationship uh, levels there are totally different than here. They find that the women are definitely much more, um, I don't want to use the word subservient because that's not what it is. I would say more caring.
of them and who they are and respect them as men and treat them as such. And it has nothing to do with how much they make. It has nothing to do with um, anything else but them just being man. I see a lot of American black women come here. They hold their head down because they can't, they can't hold a candle to these, uh, they can't hold a candle to these chicks down here because they take care of themselves, they sexy in what they wear, how they carry themselves. I work hard, you know, in America, in my, the, the state, in the city that I work in, and you don't get embraced. I leave America and come here. Brazil's a nice country, man. She, she gives me warmth, she embraces me. I came here and I, and I met the, the, um, the natives, if you will, and the respect and uh, not admiration, but just the respect factor, man. I come here now because the women treat me like the man I know that I am. Right. See, back home, you gotta buy all that. I have to buy your respect. I gotta buy your time. You can't take a sister out back home in America, man, with nothing. You understand? To me, in the areas that I'm in now, a lot of the sisters uh, working are gravitating toward, to me, negative guys. You know, pants hanging down, hair every which way. To me, that's not being a man. Right. If you can work, pay your bills, and be responsible, and be a productive member of society, then that makes you a decent man. Women don't seem to like that anymore. I, I do think the Brasiletas here could teach the American women some things about how to treat your man. Because I, the drama's just not here with them. I mean, they, even though they know we're transient, they don't come with you with all the drama. I mean, I, women in the States, within a week, I'm getting all the drama, all the baggage, and I'll be like, man, I said, we've only known each other for a couple of days, you know? And you hit me with your bad credit, your, your messed up marriages, and you know, and I'm looking at all this stuff, you know, and I tell women, I say, women that'll tell me they've been married four or five times, I say, what you need to say is that you've been divorced four or five times. I said, that tells a person more about you than to say I've been married four or five times. Oh, absolutely. Because I said, something could have happened to the guy. He could have died. Could've... But I said, if you tell somebody you've been divorced four or five times, I said, that lets me know that you got relationship problems. So, you don't want to win them. Right. And I'm not getting into that, man. I, I, I tell women all the time, let me see your credit report, not your medical report. That tells me more about you than anything else. Anything else. How you handle your business. How you handle your bills down here. I've met a lot of brothers down here. You know, I've actually, right now, I have more friends here than I do back at home. Because half the time, my, my, my homies back at home, their wives know that I live here. They know I'm single. They don't want their brothers, they don't want their husbands to know nothing about this place. As a matter of fact, some of them are forbidden to even talk to me. You know, that's the kind of, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff that go on in the Matrix and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's good to meet brothers that travel, you know, like I said earlier, you know, I'm, I tend to, I have more friends that out of the United States than I have in the United States. Right, you know, what we basically wanted to discuss was like, uh, what, how did y'all you know, come to find out about Brazil and what, what brought you here? How did you start on here? Um, basically, a friend here, Manny, has been coming for a few years and they've asked me to come. I never came first time out and I've been enjoying myself since a guy. Since so like I was playing this board. Yeah. I started coming from um, a friend of ours. And, um, they, they, they asked me to come down here. The weather was nice. Hey, I travel the world all the time, so uh, it's good. It's good. How about you? Man? Me, I got tired of American ski trip. <laughs> and it was time for me to go to check the Brazilian out. Right. And, and I've been here ever since. Mr. John was my first rented my first apartment. And I guess it was 90, it got between 89 and 90. I've been coming ever since. Uh, this is my uh, third time coming down. Uh, some friends, usual friends that we all know told me about it and I just wanted to come down and see what it was all about. I've been enjoying it ever since. First two times I came down was 06 and 07 and then it's my third time in 2010. It's my first time and uh, I really want to see the big Jesus. I haven't seen it yet. I've been here for two days and I want to see the big Jesus. You want to see the I want to see it. What is your opinion about brothers that travel and, and you know, why do you travel to places like here? I like to experience the food. Um, 
and just to see see someplace different than, than where I live and, and, and what I already know and learn something different about the world. Like you, I'm tired of the ski trip all the time. Right. <laughs> I deal with the ski trip with all this Bam Bam, right. Virginia Beach. I've been Bam Bam. I did uh, South Carolina with that beach. And then I, now I said, it's time for me to grow up and be a man. Like the call said, separate the boys from the men. It's time to move on. I try to tell what, tell my boys what it's like being here, how to culture, how to ladies, how to food. They don't believe it. But they got to come for themselves. That's right. So a lot of people, uh, they live in a box, and then they complain about things are going out going on outside the box. They put themselves in a box by all they know is that corner, that block, that town, that side of the city or whatever the case may be. And and traveling, experience different cultures, different atmospheres in general. It's like um it's lovely down here. The weather is good. Uh, meet new people. It's, it's lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Yeah, that's a good thing about that camera. This is my first time out of the country ever. You know, I've been stuck within the United States. First time out of the country. And I think once I've made it here, I'll, I'll probably do a couple trips a year. I've been living back and forth in Rio de Janeiro since for the last 25 years. My first uh, trip to Rio de Janeiro was in 1985. After I retired in 1990, I moved to Rio de Janeiro. Well, after I retired, I just came down here, I started uh, giving beach parties. Around 1987, I started beach parties. And a couple of guys came down, they were looking for an apartment. I used to stay temporarily in apartments, so I said, hey, this sounds like a good idea. So I started renting apartments around 1987. And uh, that uh, went on to me open up my own business, uh, Rio Renters for Less. And I rent apartments, hotels, I started doing parties and bachelor parties uh, and other types of, of excursions. Looking at American culture uh, in general, and in Brazilian culture in general, uh, you know, and not in categorical terms, one of the things, again, what I can say is that Brazil tends to be a bit more collective, and again, the interaction between men and women, it, 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 it seemed much more natural, where in the American context there is, there's a lot of diversity. Brazilian culture is, uh, is, a, is a blend uh, mostly influenced by the, the Africans uh, and African tradition. The African tradition is, is strong and it's uh, meal and it's, it's uh, uh, the food they eat, the songs, the music, the instruments. Uh, Brazil, the, the Portuguese brought to Brazil uh, about 10 million slaves. It was a, Brazil was the largest slave uh, port in the Western Hemisphere. Brazil is, is, is more of a patriarchal society where uh, men pretty much are the head of household. Uh, there's, a, there's a great degree of respect for men throughout Brazilian culture. The Brazilian culture is very paternalistic. You know, I mean, the, f the figure of the man is very important. So I believe the men are taught, you know, uh, you, you, have to, you have to find a wife, um, you know, and you have to be the man of the house. I come to Brazil, I sit down at the table, I order food. Young lady places a drink in front of me, opens my straw, puts it in my glass, and I'm chilling. Doesn't make her less of a woman, doesn't make me more of a man. It's just that we have different roles in life, and she knows hers, and I know mine. Back at home, they got it twisted. Why every man cannot come to Brazil and check out how it living it, you should be treated right. one time right. in your life. Why every black man right. should come down one time right. before you be put in this earth to see how this culture treats you. Come on, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's heaven.
several years ago, I read an article um, from Essence Magazine in regards to African-American men going to Brazil, and uh, the article was not pleasant at all. It was quite negative. You know, I recently read some of the articles written by uh, Essence and Jet Magazines um, giving uh, black men a bad light on their plight to Brazil. Um, I think that uh, a lot of those magazines don't fully tell the true story on what's actually going on out there with uh, the men that have moved there. I think that um, there's, there's a bad rap given to, to black men in, in the media in general. Let's do the math here. You don't, you don't write an article to put women down and put it in a woman's magazine. You want an article that's gonna sell magazines, so you're gonna put, you're gonna put, you're gonna put American black women in the favorite, and I'm speaking, uh, I'm speaking directly to the article that was written for Essence. If he don't write a, if he don't write an article that shows black women in their favorite light, don't sell no article, don't sell no magazines. He lose a job. I mean, there's been a number of articles since the Essence uh, story about that. I guess a year or so ago, um, where I've heard, you know, the new thing now is Dominican Republic. A lot of guys going to Eastern Europe, to Ukraine, and Latvia, Estonia, to meet women and whatnot. Um, you know, black guys, and to a certain extent, I think it's. <sighs> I think it's sad to a certain extent, um, just because, you know, <laughs> first of all, when you go to those kind of places, the girls that you're meeting are sex workers a lot of times. So you, they're young, you know, underprivileged, underpaid, you know, very impoverished people that you, you know, you're, it, I think to a certain extent, you're almost like a predator, you know? You go down there for a lot of guys, or, you know, you're going to meet women, but it's really just for sex is what it comes down to me. You're looking for cheap sex with pretty girls, which is prostitution as far as I'm concerned. Um, but you know, I mean, the, the girls, they don't care about the guys, you know, they're there for, to get your money. They, they can smell American guys coming from a mile away, you know, a, a black guy. <laughs> they can, I think they, they target you all to a certain extent, but you equate that with love and it's not, it is not. I mean, you're paying for sex, you're paying for a service. There, there's no facts to the article. The articles are basically a hearsay. Uh, there's no way one can tell how many uh, black men was coming to Brazil for sex without doing a survey and a uh, study and to interview and every plane coming down where the, why these guys are coming to Brazil. I, I, I read the article. Whether or not he's on to something, I don't know. But I just think brothers come down here for different reasons, though, yes? That trade is down here, but to me, it's the weather, it's the beach, it's winter in Chicago, summer below the equator. And to me, I don't need any more than that to lure me down here, though. Well, I came down here, he told me, uh, he said, hey, sunshine, beaches, and uh, some good times. And I uh, jumped on the plane and came on down. But the article, I feel uh, you should come here and experience um, what she has to offer Brazil you know, especially or specifically saying Rio in the Copacabana area before you can put something down on paper and badmouth it. Right. People that write the article saying that they don't understand why we come to this place or any other place are biased because they've never experienced it. Yes. So how can you, how can you have an opinion of something that you've never experienced yourself? Right. That, that makes no sense to me. Right. See, a lot of times they have an opinion, they have formed an opinion before they got here. Right. So it's like, if you're looking for bad and you get here, right. you're going to see bad if you look for bad. If you look for the sun, you're going to see the sun. When everybody heard I was coming to Brazil, you know, the first thing the first thing came out was something negative. Right. Well, why can't I just be going to see the big G's? Why can't I go just to see the beach? And, and then had it come around me with the people, because I work with four, three of these guys. Right. You know, we work together in, in Philly. Right. You know, we all... Firm. Right. So why couldn't it be that? You know, why why I have to jump to something just straight negative? Yeah. You know, right, right, it's just me enjoying myself before my time is up on this planet. Yeah. Basically, so. yeah, it's not an issue until the black man starts doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then it changed the brown man too. Yeah, the brown yeah. man too. This article by uh, the people who wrote the articles and why black men come to Rio is racially motivated is they're using uh, black people to do the job that their white owners wanted them to do. It, the essence is owned by, not by blacks anymore. Ebony follows suit, suit to, it's all about money. It's all about selling a book. 
if you look, there, there, there are more sex going on right in the local communities. There are more prostitution going on right in the local community in the United States, in Las Vegas, and all over. Brazil is a small percentage of guys coming to Brazil for any reason whatsoever. It costs a lot of money to come down here. And if you look at Brazil itself, Brazil in this millennium right now, Brazil soon will be the probably the number one, uh, the, the fifth uh, largest economy in the world. Once you have set in people mind, and black people mind, and black women mind, that they men, they men shouldn't come to Brazil, number one, it keep them from investing in Brazil. It keep the black women from investing in Brazil. Brazil is on a move financially, economically, this is the place to invest. Look at the seed that's put in these people's mind. That seed will keep them from coming to Brazil and investing in Brazil, all because some stupid articles that really was just racially motivated and racist articles. And that's the way I see the, the, uh, those articles on Brazil. It's garbage. It has no meaning. I believe that a lot of uh, what women are looking for today are superficial. Um, not only has it to do with uh, the way you're built or, you know, whether you have a six pack, whether you have muscles or, you know, a lot of it has to do with how fat your pockets are, you know, or, you know, what can you buy me or what can you do for me, you know, um, and it's not about um, what can we do together, but what can you do for me. A lot of women have their own stuff by the time you meet them. They have their own house, they have their own car, they're very independent. So it becomes a matter when you meet a woman, who's going to sell what? I don't want to move into her house where she's had her boyfriends. She definitely doesn't want to move in my house where I've had my girlfriends. So girlfriends, that's in a bad market like this, who gives up what? Who sells what? Well, the society we live in, man, we live in a materialistic society. Right. You know, nobody wants to go to, you know, women don't go to the store now and buy a pocketbook. They want that Louis Vuitton. Yeah. You know, they don't go to the store and buy a, a, a Volkswagen. They want a, a Mercedes Benz or that BMW. Everything's materialistic, man. If you're not coming to the table to help support that, then they want a posse. It's materialistic, man. It's bad back home. It really is. I don't want to say that it's that bad. I, I mean, me personally, I, I love my beautiful black sisters. Yeah, right. I, I agree with you. I agree. I agree. And, and part of the reason why I'm here is because I love my beautiful black sisters here, too. Exactly. I mean, they, they, they beautiful. Right. But there is a cultural difference, not just in Brazil compared to the United States. It's, it's around the world. It's, it, there is a difference in the way that women around the world look towards relationships with not just black men, but any man. Yes. The, 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 the system that we have in the United States, the, the way the society is run, is just it's different. As far as I'm concerned, it teaches women that they don't need to be in a relationship with a man, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Latin, no matter what color you are. That's just the way that I see it. And I enjoy traveling to different countries around the world and, and, and dealing with sisters that don't have the same hang-ups that society gives the women in the United States. I'm more willing to do anything for anybody. But if I know that you got my back and I know that I don't have to ask you to do this or ask you to do that. Right. And you want to just right. play your role right. and take care of things, because right. I'm going to play my role. You know, See, I, It's always a financial, I notice it's a financial, like I said, I've been single for a long time. Yeah. And when you meet people, it's, it's like, you meet sisters and they, they seem to think all they can bring, all they have to bring it's is cool. some cooking skills right. and some coochie to the table. <laughs> Tell me, brother. I don't have to worry about if my lady go out in the rain, I have fall on. <laughs> I don't have to worry about if she walk out there in the rain, her hair, her hair falls on her. Right. I can go up to the beach and hug a nice, beautiful lady and says, Hi, sweetie. How you doing? I don't know. I don't have to go about it. My black women, I don't know. And then you got to wear a rocket. Now, check, now listen, bro. How, when you were back in the States, how was our black ladies to you? How could you go walk on the beach? She got a two-piece on, nice as she is, nice, beautiful hair. Could you hug her? 
Yeah, probably I couldn't even say anything. You probably gonna say two words to me. Right. You answer that first, question, Mike. First of all, I couldn't even get near. You know, she'd probably be calling the cops on me or something. I hear this all the time. You think we're abrasive. You think we're too aggressive, whatever. Um, to a certain extent, I think it's true. Women are insecure because their game is not tight. They know that women, are, they know that women in, in, in a lot of these countries are taking care of their business, and because they 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 fear that their their man might leave them for something else, they don't want him to come here. They don't want him to experience it. They don't really want them to need to have contact. And, and the easiest thing for them to do to stop that is to play. The, play their, their role. role. Play their role. Because right. they want you to play your but role. But you know what, too? See, that's a misconception, too, back on home in the Matrix, because a role presented, how they presented, how they tell a woman what their role is, is almost like saying that they're less than us. We're not, we're not created even. We have different roles in life. Right. Most of women today are so superficial, you know. Uh, they are, they are com you know, they are much more concerned about being beautiful and being young and they are forgetting other things that also it's important in a relationship, like love, res um, respect. A lot of black women feel like if a black man can't pay their bills, then what good are they financially in the relationship? Unfortunately, I do think that is something that a lot of black women do believe. Today, you know, we have unprecedented wealth in the African-American community. Uh, we have freedom, we have opportunities that we, our ancestors would have, would have loved to have had. Uh, we, have an, we have opportunities to travel in a day's time to Africa, to our homeland. We can explore our history and our roots. Um, we have many PhDs, many doctors, lawyers. We have people who have, we have the President of the United States, first family. And so right now we should be in sort of a renaissance. The black family should be exploding. And in fact, in, in some ways, it's going the opposite direction. And I believe the culprit in this case is what I would call hyper-individualism. When you have a child, you're not single. There's two of you. Single means one. If you, have, if you have a daughter or a son, whether you be man or woman, there's, so there's no such thing as a single mother or a single father. You are a mother. You are a father. You cannot think like a single person. You've got to get up 2 o'clock in the morning, the ch child is crying, you've got to change diapers, you've got to, it costs more money. In other words, having children is a blessing, but it costs more money than being single. It takes more time than being single, and you have to now be concerned about someone else. So when I refer to single-mindedness, or individualism. Families cannot afford to be single-minded. That's why we call it single-minded. If I was single, I only have to think about myself. So I can get off work and go to the pub and go drink and hang out with the fellas and do this and that. If I have a child, if I have a wife, I can't think like that anymore. And we have actually some people who are unfortunately married who still think like they're single. Or we have people who are parents who think like they're single. This is probably the single most pernicious thing in the black community. When it comes to uh, countries as large as America and as large as Brazil, there is tremendous diversity. Um, but I think it's safe to say, in general, uh, and I'm not speaking in categorical terms, uh, that uh, Brazilian culture tends to be a bit more collective, where, again, family is the center of everything. American, Amer you know, uh, America is known for individuality. Not only Brazilians, but all Latin Americans are very close to their family. We are very, very, very close. We have very strong ties with our family, which I think is different from here. I think that we need to place an emphasis on the family. I don't think that we hold enough emphasis on making sure that our kids are raised well, that they respect authorities. Um, I don't know what happened to the idea of, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen anymore. I think if we got out and met our neighbors more often and were in commune with them, then we would have a, a, greater, a greater community. Either we have to get back into reinforcing the importance of education without kids, the importance of family without kids, teaching those fundamental core values that they worked not even 20 years ago. I mean, we're not that far off path, I don't think. 
But the parents have to really get back into being parents, you know, raising strong kids, reinforcing those values. It, it starts from the home, you know. To me, it goes back to what happens behind those four walls when a child is, is being raised, you know, and it can't be grandma, it can't be auntie, it needs to be mama and daddy, okay? Every child on this earth has a mother and a father, every child. If there's six billion people on this earth, there's two parents, so there's a father and a mother. And we tend to blur those distinctions. There is a father and mother. The only question is, are they in the same family? When you have a nucleus, a family, where there's a mother and there's a father and a child, that's a very strong unit. And I think it has some of the lowest statistics of homicide or suicide or incarceration, the highest set of scores on the SATs and all the GREs and so forth and so on. And again, I'm not an educator. You can sort of do that, do the research on it. But you'll find that when you have an intact black family, the one I've described, their numbers are competitive with every other racial or ethnic group in the country. It's only when you break apart the black family do you start to get these other set of statistics. You know, we teach the children that, um, hey, you must get an education. You know, and we need to know that since uh, male children are falling behind at a larger rate, we need to put the emphasis on them. And we need to teach them and give them good role models on what a good black man should be and how to conduct themselves in a relationship that actually works. Ones that's hurting are the children. And you can see that in the amount of delinquency. You see that 50% of, of, of young black kids are not even finishing high school. Okay, and you have absentee fathers leaving them. Jawan Zakonjusu, if, if, if I can name him as a professor, he's out of Chicago, I believe. He says that we're raising our girls and loving our boys. And unfortunately, we're not teaching our young men to be responsible. I, I, I'm serious, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with young men. Because if we don't do anything, you know, you, you can already see the imbalance. And the, you know, the, the marriage rate for African Americans is at an all-time low. You know, I mean, in the broader society, it's, you know, it's, it's, there are issues, but for specifically for the African-American community, it's low. Part of it is, uh, has to do with money. That's a big thing now. Brothers don't like women that make more money than them because they say, <laughs> he who wears the crown controls the gold. I see the guys that want to feel like the man or whatever else, but when you, you can't pay my bills, you can't do certain things that I may want you to do, you know, I mean, it sort of goes like, well, do I really need you? Unfortunately, I do think that is something that a lot of black women do believe, but at the end of the day, you need to also look for companionship. Money's great. Money will do a lot of things. I'm not saying that you don't need it, but at the same time, you need to have a companion that you can be with and that you can love. You know, just because he makes a certain amount of money doesn't mean he can't lose his job the next day and not be able to find another one. And if he loses his job the next day, does that mean that you aren't going to love him anymore? Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and I think that our priorities are in the wrong place. It's money is important, uh, but I think that family, um, integrity, uh, self-respect, these types of things, these, these, these intangible things are much more important. Being uh, thankful for the blessings of this life. And then, if you are a professional, even if you're a professional black woman and the guy who you're dating is a bus driver, well, be thankful that you have a husband and that you have a father to your children and you have a home. And the disparities of who's bringing in what money, I mean, this is just money. This is just, you know, your money is not worth more than your husband. Your money is not worth more than your child. I mean, how much would you price your child? And having a good education for your child and that child knowing who his father is and the father's in the home, if you just value that, that's worth billions. And so you're making $70,000 a year and your husband making thirty-five dollars is meaningless. But this is what we're doing. We're placing higher value on money and materialism than we are on the family and having a spouse and having children and healthy, happy, sound structure.
quando eles vêm em grupo, a gente vamos para discoteca aqui no Brasil, aqui no Rio de Janeiro, né, para ver a show, Rio Santo, a gente levamos os, os meninos para poder curtir. E também eu queria dizer que eu não sei o porquê as mulheres americanas não gostam que eles venham para cá. Porque quando eles vêm para cá, eles são muito bem tratados, porque as brasileiras sabem cuidar deles, entendeu? E também tem que muitos falam pra gente que as mulheres americanas ou quer saber trabalho 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 e esquece o marido esquece o grande às vezes o grande homem que tem do lado aí ah, eles eles conversam muito com a gente sobre as mulheres americanas eu não entendo por que elas não gostam parece que não gostam das mulheres brasileiras por quê eles vêm ao Brasil a gente conversa a gente dança a gente bebe e elas não gostam, eles chegam e eles falam que chegam em casa, no país deles, e as mulheres são frias, as mulheres não querem saber deles, entendeu? E as mulheres só pensam em trabalho, em trabalho, em trabalho, e não pensam no, às vezes, o homem maravilhoso que está do seu lado, os americanos, entendeu? Por quê? Eu, não, eu, quero, eu gostaria... Eu gostaria de saber o porquê disso, o porquê dessa implicância com nós, brasileiras, cariocas, baianas. Eu queria saber o porquê da implicância, porque pode vir também, pode vir as mulheres, os filhos. Ui, a gente vão tratar da mesma forma, é, a gente vai pra praia, pro restaurante, não vai ter estresse sem problema, entendeu? E assim, quando eu conheço os americanos, assim, eu converso muito com eles. E eles falam sempre um pouquinho de cada coisa, um pouquinho do trabalho, um pouquinho da família e um pouquinho das festas deles lá, que um dia eu vou com certeza que eu não tô morta e vou curtir muito, muito mesmo lá. Vim fazer um pequeno documentário sobre meus amigos americanos quando vem ao Brasil. Nós saímos com umas festas e baladas. E é muito bom. Né? Eles são muito legal comigo, com todos. Não, nunca tive estresse com eles, nunca problemas nenhum. Ao contrário de alguns homens brasileiros, aqui. E. Eu não que falar. E quando eu vejo eles, eles me tratam super bem. Né? Saímos, vamos pra praia. Vamos para o restaurante, conversamos bastante sobre lá onde eles moram e aqui. E eles falam que gostam muito do Brasil. Alguns vêm até morar aqui. Sim, eu gosto dos pretos americanos. Eles são muito divertidos. Quando eles vêm no Brasil, assim, eles adoram o Brasil, eles adoram tudo. Eu adoro hip hop. Eu amo dança, eu gosto de dançar e eu gosto do estilo que os americanos dançam. Eu adoro, eu adoro tudo, assim, todos os ritmos de hip hop, eu adoro. <música>